Okay, this is a binary integer problem, and what we are doing is a sort of financial uh, mathematics application of integer programming. So Merrill Lynch is considering six projects, A, B, C, D, E, and F, and each project has an initial cost, okay, the expected profit rate uh, expressed as a percentage of the cost, and that 8 is a typo, and an associated risk of failure, okay? So, uh, we have a cost, profit rate, okay, one year from now, expressed as a percentage of the initial cost, and so on. So, provide a formulation to choose the projects that maximize uh, the total expected profit. Watch that, the total expected profit such that Merrill Lynch does not invest more than four million dollars okay and its average failure risk is not over five percent so for example if we're working on two uh, just investing only in A and B projects A and B the risk uh, failure risk of project A is six percent the risk uh, of failure of project B is four percent so on average five percent okay if you consider um, risk A, or the risk of A, the risk of F, and let's say the risk of D, that would be 6%, 5%, and 4%. On uh, uh, So that would be also 5% on average. That's going to be a little bit tricky to, to sort of figure out a solution to, so we'll come around, that, come around to that in a while. So first off, our, uh, what we got to do is we have to maximize expected profit. Now we're given the profit rates, not the profit. So what we have to do here is, let's get that back in the shot. Um, y, uh, so I'll maximize, okay. So the prof uh, so first off the variables are x1 if uh, that's either 0 or 1 depending on whether sorry xa depending on whether or not we are going to uh, go ahead with project a uh, xb i'm going to spread this out here xc and spread it out over two lines plus xd plus xfe plus xf okay now so these are going to be binary variables. These are going to be either zero or one, depending on whether or not we go ahead with the project. Okay. So um, what we have to do is maximize the profit. Okay. So what is the profit of each? Well, in the first case, it's going to be ten percent of one point three. So that's not point one three. Okay. Not point one three x a. Okay. Uh, the next one is uh, 8%, not 0.8, 20% .8, of 0.8 is 0.16. Okay, I might just sort of spread that out there a bit. Okay. The next one is 6% uh, of 20, uh, sorry, 20% of 0.6. This is C here, 20% of 0.6. So that's also 12, so plus 0.12. XC. Uh, what we got then is 10% of 1.8, uh, 1 it's 0.18. 10% uh, of 1.2, 0.12. And finally, 10% of 2.4, that's 0.24. XF. So let's just say for argument's sake we go with projects, we only d develop projects A, C and E, what would our profit be then? That would be 0 0.13 times 1 plus 0 0.16 times 0. So, a, so this one, this one and this one, A, C and E plus 0 plus 0 0.12 times 1 plus 0 plus 0 0.12 times 1 plus Zero. That would our, our profit in that case would be 0 0.37. Okay. So that's what we got to maximize. Okay. Now we have to consider the constraints. Okay. Now there's actually some logical constraints. So I sort of save that for a different video. Okay. Uh, I'll, I'll just show you. I haven't actually done. I have this video done first. Like suppose A is chosen, B must also be chosen. I'm going to sort of. That's a separate matter. 
Um, what we got to do is we I cannot invest more than uh, four million dollars. So the sum we spend here has cannot exceed four million. So this is straightforward enough. Uh, subject to uh, x a plus x b uh, plus x c uh, plus x d plus x e plus x f uh, those are the binaries so 1.3 not 0.8 and not 0.6 1.3 not 0.8 not 0.6 uh, 1.8 1.2 1.3 1.4 1.5 1.6 1.7 1.8 and that has to be less than four. Okay, I'm sort of spreading it out there over two lines, but essentially all that has to be less than four. Let's just see: does our A C E combination uh, is that okay? So that would be 1.3 plus 0.8 times zero, plus 0.6 times one, plus zero plus 1.2. Uh, I'll put in that zero there plus 1.2 plus 0 and uh, that actually gives us plenty of room to spare that's assuming we go with A, C and E only I just sort of picked that example that would work out to be what would that work out to be 3.1 that would be less than 4 so A, C, E would be a valid combination still might not be the best one though but anyway now that's all, all well and good okay so the we, this is the profit rate the profit rate we uh, from the profit rate we got the profit. This is the cost. Now this is the next bit is actually probably a little bit of a challenge. Okay, the average total a uh, failure risk. The average failure risk is not over five percent. Okay, so I'll just give you sort of quick example of that. Um, each first off, what we're going to take is these are equally weighted. Okay, the failure risks are equally weighted. Okay, so that it's not weighted by cost or anything like that. So they're equally weighted. That we're going to sort of take that view there. That's the wrong question. Let's go back here. Uh, ha uh, weightings equally weighted. That's just sort of something. It's hard to see. It seems sort of. Why am I saying that a lot? Because sometimes they don't get equally weighted. They're weighted by the costs. So, for example, a, uh, a. Let's say just A B C. Let's just look at those. A B C. Uh, the six percent, six percent, and four percent. Okay. The uh, average there. Would be five and five point three percent, five and one third percent. Too high. Okay, that would be an invalid combination A B C. Whereas if we had A B and D or A B and E, six percent, four percent, five percent. Okay. So we got to figure out a way of expressing this as a constraint. This is actually a little bit tricky. Something like something like this here. Something what I like what I have here. How do you write it in a way that it comes out like that? Okay. This requires a bit of lateral thinking. Just first off, what we got to consider is how many projects have been oh sorry, I'm going A B C uh, X D plus X E plus X F okay so no matter uh, so for whatever combination of projects this would actually just it this this equation would give us the proper uh, number of projects for example 1 plus 0 just going back to my ACE combination that would give us a total um, a sum total of 3 okay now, uh, when we're dealing with uh, essentially, this was I'm going to sort of throw you um, a, hint, a big hint here. Rather than dealing with the average failure risk, what we might do is the total sum of the failure risks. Okay, so that might be easier to work with. In this case, in this case, the sum rather than dealing with 5.33 percent, what we might do is add them up. That would be 16 percent. Okay, it's a little bit strange, but bear with me. 
okay 16 percent okay if we have three projects what is the threshold here that it can't cross the, the if the if, if there's for if there's three projects okay sorry actually I'll do this first two projects the we can't exceed 10 percent if there's three projects can't exceed uh, 15 percent if we're if we're going ahead with four projects uh, we can't exceed 20 percent so we got to sort of figure out a way of n expressing this as a tr as a constraint essentially what we might do here is we actually might look at it as two times five percent three times five percent four times five percent and so on okay but we can easily uh, if there is two projects we can easily sort of come up with a way of making making uh, uh, having a two appear here automatically and if it's three projects instead that would number would get changed to three how do we do that we include this expression here in our answer okay so essentially what we have to do is have our summation less than or equal to I, I, I was working in 5% but now I'm just going to sort of translate to 0 0.05 okay not 0.05 I'm going to go work in decimal places proportions so this is what we have to have uh, 0 0.05 times XA plus XB plus XC and so on okay so that would give us 15%, 10%, 20%, or 0 0.1, 0 0.15, 0 0.2, uh, depending on how many projects were picked. Okay, so that's a nice way of doing it. That's the sort of threshold. So uh, if we're dealing with like the total sum of the um, projects here, we could just sort of uh, fit it up accordingly like this. So just to sort of like uh, work from here, we would have. Not point not six times x one plus not point not what is it four four x a sorry keep putting that in x b plus not point not six x c plus not point not five x d plus not point not five x e plus not point not four x f let and so that expression has to be less than or equal to not point not five x one plus x two x a x b and so on plus x f that's actually a really nice way of doing it let's just check it out let's go for uh, a different combination let's go for a tuple here or a sort of combination of values 0 1 1 z uh, 0 0 1 okay so what how would that look here let's go back here no, so there we go how would that look here put in a 0 there a 1 a 1 two zeros and a 1 there. So what do we have? 0 0.04 plus 0 0.06 plus 0 0.04 I'll just write that down here again. 0 0.06 0 plus, not, uh, sorry, not, 0 plus 0 0.04 plus 0 0.06 plus 0 plus 0 plus 0 0.04 and that is Essentially, this is all this stuff here, okay? And let's write the other side of the constraint: less than or equal to 0 0.05 times 0 plus 1 plus 1 plus 0 plus 0 plus 1. Okay, so is not 0.14 less than or equal to 0 0.05 times 3? Yeah, good okay so that actually yeah that actually works perfect sense so here the the sum of the has uh, the failure risks is less than our allowable threshold 
Okay, so that is the Merrill Lynch integer programming, binary integer programming example. There's logical constraints which I've done separately.